Hello everyone, I'm Clark of Salford and welcome back to Obscure Film Club, a series dedicated to exploring a world of lesser known, under the radar films that deserve way more attention. In today's episode we will delve into the works of James Benning, an American experimental filmmaker renowned for his distinctive style of slow, meditative cinema. Benning's films frequently feature long, uninterrupted takes of sprawling landscapes and mundane urban spaces. Our discussion will revolve around one of his most notable works, Landscape Suicide, a cinematic exploration to darker facets of American culture woven through two distinct narratives. In the 1980s, a number of American independent filmmakers began to experiment with non-linear narrative structures and themes of history, memory and death. However, James Benning's approach was unique in his combination of personal subject matter and documentary elements. As well as his focus on the landscape and the connection between people and place. In contrast to the work of other well known avant garde filmmakers such as Stan Brackage and Maya Deren, who were more concerned with form and abstraction, Benning sought to engage his viewers with the world around them and encourage them to contemplate their own relationship to it. In particular, Benning's films, American Dreams, Landscape Suicide, and Used Innocence, stand out as remarkable examples of his work. In these films, he explores the minds of violent criminals, using their own words to create a chilling portrait of the darker aspects of American society. However, unlike other filmmakers who might use such material for shock value or to pass moral judgment, Benning situates these crimes within their historical and political context, allowing viewers to draw their own conclusions about the factors that lead people to commit violent acts. Landscape Suicide is a particularly notable example of Benning's style. Released in 1987, the film tells the story of two real-life murderers, Ed Gein, a notorious serial killer from Wisconsin, and Bernadette Prote, who stabbed her high school friend Kristen Costas in Northern California in early 1984. Landscape Suicide is not an easy film to watch, but it is a powerful one. Benning's use of slow, contemplative shots of landscapes and settings serves to heighten the tension and sense of unease that permeates both narratives. The voiceover narration, often delivered in a matter-of-fact tone, adds to the sense of detachment and objectivity, forcing the viewer to confront the disturbing facts of each case without any sense of sensationalism or glorification. In this way, Benning's manipulation of time and use of different film techniques helped to create a profound and haunting exploration of the dark underbelly of American society. In an interview with French magazine Cine Fils, James Benning discusses the importance of using time to confront or manipulate audiences as time is integral to his films. Time is, is manipulated in films, and so one could say filmmakers try to manipulate time, uh, um, make it uh, have ellipses in time, jumps in time, speed up time, slow down time. But that's just the illusion of what the story is doing or what the film is trying to do. The reality of time, it, it exists and there's, it's no different inside the theater than outside the theater. In conclusion, James Benning's contribution to American independent cinema in the 1980s was significant and unique. His focus on personal subject matter and documentary elements and his use of time, landscape and personal narrative created a style that challenged viewers to engage with the world in a new way, and with his considerable body of work, Benning has become the foremost filmmaker of the American landscape. Landscape Suicide stands as a testament to Benning's importance as a filmmaker and as a unique addition to the history of cinema. Thank you for joining me for this episode and please like and share around if you learned something new or leave a comment down below. But more importantly, stay tuned as I dig deeper into an endless rabbit hole of films you won't want to miss on the next episode of Obscure Film Club.